Greetings, pilots. Dmitry Mikhailov here, also known as Izida. In today's barrel roll, I'll be showing you a remarkable German plane, the Messerschmitt BF 109 F4. Soon, we'll do battle against various different nations, but first, a short history lesson. The German aviation industry was only able to fully adopt production of the Friedrichs in March to April of 1941. And in as early as July 1941, the first Friedrichs fell into the hands of Soviets and British experts almost simultaneously. A JG-26 commander, Major Rolf Pingel, unsuccessfully attacked an English bomber, his BF-109 F2 taking a hit to the radiator in the process. The German pilot was forced to belly land his 109 in British territory. It emerged that the plane had been equipped with the scarce MG-151-20 gun at Pingel's request while still on the factory floor at a time when other German pilots were flying with the 15mm MG-151. This was standard practice. Manufacturers would slightly modify fighters specially for flying aces, giving them unique characteristics. A well-known example are the engines of two BF-109 F2s belonging to Adolf Galland, which ran on 100 octane fuel and apparently provided slightly more power than the standard models. Moving on, the first opponent we'll be doing battle with is the USSR. At rank 3, our main rivals are the Yak-9, the Yak-3, the La 5FN and the E-185. At the beginning of the battle, we can safely gain some height and move towards the enemy. It won't be easy to get above us. While we gain height, we'll overheat, but since we have water cooling, we simply turn off the afterburner until the temperature drops to a safe level. If our opponent reaches the same height and heads straight for us, we can disengage in the following way. Before we meet the enemy, we increase our speed to 400 by flying in a straight line or at a slight descent and pass underneath the enemy. If you and the Soviet plane are one-on-one, -on -one, your opponent will be certain of his superior position due to his good maneuverability and will likely try to turn to face you immediately. But if we were lower when we diverged with the enemy, we pull up and reduce our throttle to 80% at the high point of our loop. Now we have a reasonably good chance to turn towards the enemy first. When you're higher than your opponents, the safest and easiest method to use is actually boom and zoom, but I'll show you some situations where your opponent has the upper hand. For example, you descend, shoot down a plane, and then you find an opponent above you. Following this, you have to constantly build up speed, and when your opponent comes close to you, fly upwards, letting him pass beneath you. When you're at the apex, you have time to think of who to attack or where to go to escape from attacks. In the best case scenario, you may be able to avoid attacks from three opponents at once, sometimes even counterattacking in the process. This is no easy task. It requires good skills with the throttle and flaps, but we'll talk about that a little later. I have the following general tips for battles against the USSR. You won't escape from a Yak-3, La-5N, or E-185 in a straight line, but you might in a dive. A spiral climb is possible, but risky. The Soviet Yaks have a good roll rate, and they are able to correct their course to match your trajectory in time. It's easier to pass such opponents at high speed with wider maneuvers. Although it is possible to deal with a yak in a dogfight, it's not easy, and you're usually better off using boom and zoom tactics. USA This time, we're in our comfort zone. We're going up against King Cobras, Thunderbolts, and Corsairs. We can deal with them easily both, using boom and zoom tactics and dogfighting. These battles are best fought with maximum energy preservation, keeping the throttle on as much as possible and rarely using the flaps. All excess speed should be turned into height before returning to battle. Put simply, 
all battles against American planes should be fought vertically. The only opponent capable of outperforming us in a dogfight is the Hellcat, which we'll encounter from time to time. We have to be more careful with this one. Strafe attacks are best against it. The US planes are good in a dive, particularly the Thunderbolt and King Cobra. You won't escape from a King Cobra in a straight line. You're better off taking the fight. In the Friedrich, you'll be sure to win it. Interesting thing. In my view, the USA is the only nation you can go up against with extra suspended armament consisting of two MG-151-15 guns. Suspended armament worsens your plane's flying characteristics, but in this case, this won't cause too many problems. Moreover, the increased weight of your second salvo bulk will come in handy when strafe attacking American bombers. Britain isn't a difficult opponent if you use boom and zoom tactics. But dogfighting against the Spitfire F Mark IX is problematic. It has the best turning time out of all our opponents. Nonetheless, if you're below a Spitfire and it's attacking you or simply forcing a dogfight on you, there is a solution. In spite of its excellent turning capabilities, the plane's roll rate is noticeably lower than ours. As a result, if we constantly break our trajectory, the Spitfire will have a hard time successfully firing on us. In this case, it's also important to keep an optimal speed and take off the throttle and release the flaps in time to force your opponent to fly past you. Spiral climbs and barrel rolls work great. Scissors should only be used at high speeds, as the Spitfire's altitude control will be significantly lower. And even then, you should constantly break your trajectory by rolling the plane. All this will make you as awkward an opponent as possible for the Spitfire. The barrel roll episode on throttle and flaps contains a lot of information about this, and I strongly recommend watching it. Let's not forget about the Typhoon either. An excellent plane capable of catching up to Luftwaffe planes in a dive. It does well in dogfights, but is not as good as the Spitfire in this regard. Attacking such a plane with boom and zoom tactics will be difficult. An experienced opponent will dive and let you fly past him. You'll need some patience here. Sooner or later, you'll force him to the ground. But don't forget that targets remaining at a higher altitude are your priority. Well, that's about it. If you learn to use the Messerschmitt BF 109 F4 properly, you're sure to fall in love with this plane. Please subscribe to the channel and give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. I'd also be grateful for your comments with suggestions and requests for future videos. After all, all of this is done for you. And on that note, I'll say goodbye. Have a nice day and good luck in the War Thunder skies.